Hallelujah. Welcome back again to another edition of Just Before You Go to Bed, Preparing Souls for Heaven. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, edition we're going to have this night in the name of Jesus. May God bless you as you watch this program, as you stretch forth your heart, your spirit, and your soul just to receive what God has for you this night. We'll give you a good night's sleep. I pray that God himself will look after you this night himself in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. This night I want to talk to you about life after. You know, uh, Luke 16, verse 19 to 21, tells us the, about the parable of, the, of, the, of Lazarus and the rich man, you know, the rich man and, and, and Lazarus. Praise God. And one of the things that I want to speak clearly about today is that lots of people do not give a damn, do not give a damn about their lives after death. They just live their lives as if life just ends. Life doesn't just end. After death, there is what we call judgment. Everyone will be judged, whether you like it or not. Everybody will be judged either for the good or for the bad. There must be a judgment for everyone. And if there's no judgment, it means that we, we have just lived our lives for nothing. That how can you explain a man who's been wicked, a rapist, an evil person, a murderer, and then suddenly is not uh, caught by the arms of the law, and the person suddenly dies. You think the person has, has evaded justice? No. God has justice. He's the final habit, and he gives the final justice. Uh, but you see, everybody must, must prepare for life after death. Uh, whether you like it or not, uh, after this life, there's another life you have to live. And that life is either in eternity, in hell, or eternity in, in heaven. Praise the Lord. Lots of people are busy on earth looking for money, looking for pleasure, but have no plan of how to use what they have on earth to secure themselves a place in heaven. It might amaze you to know that you can use what you have on earth to secure yourself a place in heaven as a child of God. Praise the Lord. And this, this teaching might look strange, but if you listen clearly, then you will understand what I'm saying. So you never, you may, let me say something, you never make heaven by accident. Making heaven has to be by a willing action of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. And anyone who does not accept Jesus cannot make heaven. So you never make heaven by accident, clearly. But you can make hell by accident, you know, by, by simply doing some strange things and then you miss heaven. And when you miss heaven, you go to hell. Praise the Lord. As a Christian, as a person, an individual, to make heaven, you, you must make a request, a request and a permission to get to heaven. And what is that request? That request is asking God to forgive you your sins and save your soul, but only through his son, Jesus Christ. If you look at Luke 23, Luke 23, I want to read Luke 23 from verse 42. Luke 23, praise God. Luke 23 from verse 42 and uh, to 43, and then you begin to understand. This was about the rich, the the the, the thief on the cross of Calvary, uh, hung along with Jesus Christ, and this thief, you know, recognized the fact that he was a sinner and he had committed an offense, you know, and deserved to die. But he said something. And he turned to Jesus and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Now, what is it about this thief? This thief was guilty and should die and go to hell. But you see, the mercy of God supersedes every other judgment of man or any judgment of nature. This man first called Jesus Lord. He accepted Jesus as his Lord. And then he accepted Jesus as his Savior. 
That's why he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. When he recognized him as his Lord. Secondly, he recognized him. He said, Lord, remember me when that come into thy kingdom. He remembered him as his best savior, his Lord who could save him and save his life. And he remembered, he, 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 he acknowledged the fact that Jesus Christ is a king of kings. And because of that acknowledgement, Jesus gave him a promise and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Will you want to do the same thing to recognize Jesus as Lord today? And as you recognize Jesus as Lord today and see him as the king that can save you, then you will begin to understand that it is well with you as God himself shall promise you paradise. You never attain paradise by violence. You, know, you can't kill somebody to go to paradise. And paradise is not a place where you're going to be giving virgins and all those things because it's not a place of lust. It's a place of eternal pleasure, not a place of fleshy pleasure. Because flesh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So you don't go to, the, to, to heaven with this, your flesh. It's only this flesh that desires, that desires sexual satisfaction. The flesh of the spirit has no desire for sexual satisfaction. So, if you are hoping to go to a paradise or heaven, uh, hoping to have virgins, I think then you 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 <laughs> then it means you do not understand the law of the spirit. Praise God! You don't go to paradise by 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 by, by breaking the law, being a murderer. No, you go to paradise simply by obedience to the word of God. And what did God say? I send you my son, Jesus Christ, who is going to be the sacrifice. And if you believe in him, you will have eternal life. That is this truth about salvation. Many have tested it and many have come back from death to tell us about Jesus Christ and how they met Jesus Christ after that. Now, I want us to go to, to Luke 16. In Luke 16, I want us to take a look at a few things. Uh -huh. Oh, you know, I will never stop speaking the word of God, no matter how I feel, no matter the pressure in which I get into, no matter what Satan throws at me, I will never stop speaking the word of Jehovah, the Most High. Now, listen, uh, if you look at Luke 16, I want to read a little bit about a story of a certain rich man, Lazarus, I mean, a certain rich man, and then, and then a beggar called Lazarus. A poor beggar called Lazarus. He said there was a certain rich man. I'm going to read from verse 19. Luke, Luke 16 from verse 19. He said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his master at, at, at his gate full of souls and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his soul now this was a sin yeah, there was a rich man and there was a poor man in front of his house but he never cared about this poor man now this rich man, what god did was god knew that this rich man could lose his soul so god sent a poor man to stay in the front of his house, believing that this rich man will be kind to this poor man, look after this poor man, and give to this poor man, and in the process, is giving to God. You know, but this rich man ignored this mystery, ignored the fact that God was trying to save his soul, because this was in the Old Testament in those days, where salvation was also based on or your covenant with Christ as a, as, as a, as a Jew, yeah, a covenant with God you know, as a Jew. And if you look at that covenant, it, it was really with Christ, really, then. And then, uh, uh, we, and then for the fact that you have this, the circumcision and those things, those are things that qualify you for heaven. And then your good works all added together qualifies you. But you see, they went to paradise. They, they went to paradise, not heaven itself, Jesus. Jesus is the only one who really is come from heaven and returned, praise God, at that time. Now, I want to explain that this man had a poor man in his house, but this man did not care about the poor man, and that grieved God himself. And um, 
and desiring to be fed with a rich with a crumb that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his saw. Now, I want to read verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and was buried and was buried. You see, that's the funny thing. The rich man was buried. Now, and the Bible says in verse 23, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes. That is to say, he went to hell. He went to hell. Now, if you look at the previous verse, verse 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. It means that death awaits both the rich and the poor. Everybody will experience death. Death awaits the rich and the poor. Everybody will experience death, one way or the other, except those who will rapture, their body will be transformed with, with the twinkle of an eye. They will receive their resurrected body while alive on earth. Praise the Lord. And then they will proceed to heaven. And then I say, and both were in hell. So if you do not know, please know today that hell awaits anyone. Hell awaits anyone who has not uh, done things properly and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. Verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Now this scripture gave us a clue of what hell is. Hell is a flame, a flame of fire. You know, in hell there's flame of fire. Now, we have come to understand that after judgment, after death, there is judgment. The Bible says, appointed unto man, it is appointed unto man to die but once, to die but once after that judgment, to die but once after that judgment. I want to let you know that there'll be judgment for everyone. One day you will die, but know that after that, there'll be judgment for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It then also tells you, that scripture also confirms to you that hell is real. Hell, hell is real. It confirms to you that hell is real and is a place of torment and tears and rejection. Why? Because the old man, I mean, the, 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 the rich man was in torment. He said, and, and he cried and said, Father, and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So it tells us that hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of torment. And then you come to understand from verse 25 that heaven is real too. But Abraham said, Son, now, now Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. I want to ask you one question. After life here, will you be tormented? After life here, will you be tormented? After life here, will you be comforted? You know, there are lots of, uh, you know, people, you know, when somebody dies, they begin to say lots of things. They begin to talk about comfort. There's no comfort for a wicked man. Anyone that dies, there will be no comfort for such a person in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, uh, uh, I, I want to take us a, 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 a bit further. If you look at verse 25, look at verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things. The good things you have received in life now, good house, good car, and everything. What are you using them for? Are you using them to serve God? Are you using them to, 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 to do good? Or are you using them for your own benefit alone and forgetting God? Remember, someday you will pay for it. In Jesus' name, that what he says. Amen, 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 amen. That rich man, if you see, the rich man was received, he had received his goods, and he did not share with the poor man. He did not share with the poor man, and that condemned him. It condemned him because he did not share with the poor man. He did not share with the poor man. Praise the Lord. Now, there's something important there is, 
you know, look at what this man, how this man reasoned. He said, then he said, in verse, verse 27, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. You see, the, the, the man in hell knew that he wouldn't be able to come out. There's no way he can come out because there was a gulf separating both of them. But the, the, the rich man reasoned. He said, well, if I can't get that, Lazarus can go. You see, even in hell, he was still claiming to be a boss. <laughs> even in hell, he was still thinking that Lazarus could be his errand boy. Maybe as he used to do on earth. I said, look, send Lazarus to my brother so that they don't come to hell. But and, and, and let's see uh, the answer Abraham gave him. He gave the rich man. Then, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but I, if one went into them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, nothing will, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Now he is trying to say, that you must listen to the preachers who are preaching to you now. Because by the time you're dead, it will be too late. And nobody's going to come to help you. Today, I am bringing the word of life to you. and bringing it into your home. and bringing it into your house. Via this television network. And I'm asking you today, that today is your appointed time. Do not neglect the teachings. Do not neglect this life I'm bringing to you. I ask of you, do not neglect it. If you neglect this life I bring to you, it might be too late to reconcile it. But the way the world is going now, anything could happen. The way the world is going now, nothing is, nothing is predictable. And that is why I'm asking you, please do not neglect this message, for it will help you, it will bless your life. It will, it will bring good news to you to accept Jesus Christ. And when you accept Jesus Christ, you are made forever. When you accept Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. When you accept Jesus Christ, the best will come to you in relation to eternity. Father, I pray for the people, Lord, today, that somebody watching this program will accept Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I just want to listen, uh, I want you to listen to this. If you, this night, feel in your heart that you want to enjoy life after death, you want to be a, a real person after death, just accept Jesus Christ. And my work today is to lead you to Jesus Christ. Simple. I'm going to stretch forth my hands. I want you to stretch forth your hands too and receive power in Jesus' name. Now let's do it. Say, Father. Say, Father. I am a sinner. I accept your son, Jesus Christ. I had, I, I had rejected him before, but today I surrender and accept him. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me and accept me to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You see, by just simple, this simple prayer, you've accepted Jesus into your life. And your name is now written in the book of life. And you are saved. Now you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You have to work, the ultimate, work out the ultimate salvation. And what do you mean by, what do I mean by work out? You have to follow the ultimate salvation by faith. By faith and not by manipulation. In the name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And thank you for accepting Jesus this night. Those of you that have accepted Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
We appreciate you for your salvation. We appreciate you for your soul that God has saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But now, listen to me. Before you go to bed, I want to pray for somebody. You know, hallelujah. There is, I hear the name Bernard. 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 God wants to help you. Bernard is like you are in a kind of mental prison where you imagine snakes and big snakes. And it is tearing your life apart. Today, God wants to set that thing apart and bring it to an end. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for this, Bernard. I release you from this bondage in the name of Jesus. And I demand, I demand for you that your life, for your life, that your life will be set free completely in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for this person. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Man, you see, if you have just accepted Jesus Christ, my concept to you is this. Find a church. Buy yourself a Bible. Begin to attend church. Please avoid unnecessary criticisms and don't listen to those who criticize so much. Make sure you remain on the pastor. Introduce yourself. They will look after you. And follow the word of God. Study the word of God day and night. And God will use it to prepare you for your future. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Well, this night I want to wish you a good night's sleep. I want you to enjoy yourself this night. As I wish you a good night sleep. May God bless you and enjoy yourselves. Amen. Mm. We love you. Thanks. So many are oppressed at night. Now, the word of God will arise like fire and hammer to stand in your defense to give you a good night's sleep. Things that you're carrying. The guilt of the sins you are carrying, just give them over to me. For this understanding, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. While you are studying the word, that your deliverance could just come. God could just give you solutions to the problem. God has given Pastor Mike the mandate to speak his word into the lives of people to prepare them for bed. Just before you go to bed, Jesus is Lord and heaven is our destination just before you go to bed. God bless you for watching. We hope this program has blessed you. If you've been touched and have a testimony, please let us hear from you. Have a good night's sleep and God bless you.